Brian Darling is a former senior staffer to Senator Paul. He joins me now. Thank you so much for being here, Brian. Good to see you. What will a what would a presidential Paul foreign policy platform? What would that look like? I mean, if 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 you if we had President Paul today, I would be so interested in seeing how he would be dealing with the Iranian situation over President Obama. What does that look like, Brian? Well, he's talked about it pretty extensively in his rollout. He's talked about his idea of realism, his balanced approach on foreign policy, where he's the only United States senator who's proposed a declaration of war against ISIS on one hand, yet he also is against nation building, and that's his overall theme. He wants a more restrained foreign policy, a realist foreign policy, one that recognizes threats, but one that that honors Reagan and Reagan's peace through strength idea and the fact that Reagan actually negotiated with the Soviets. We had the idea of trust but verify. And I don't think, and, and, and Rand Paul has said himself, he does not trust the Iranians, but he doesn't believe that negotiations are inherently bad. What he does believe is what the Constitution says. If we do, if, if President Obama engages in an agreement with Iran, that's a treaty. Congress gets to speak on that. The president can't just bypass Congress and ignore Congress. He has to cut a deal, if he does, that Congress confirms and Congress approves with a two-thirds vote because that would be in the nature of a treaty. He also mentioned in his rollout, which was one of the best rollouts I think I've seen from a presidential contender before, and, and, I, and I did appreciate how he understands that we live in a soundbite culture because his entire speech, it was just punchy, it was tweetable, uh, and one of the things that a lot of people picked up on, and he really pushed this home, he said, well, you know, not one more dime to these countries who you see on our televisions burning our flags in the streets, screaming death to America, all of this other stuff that are, te that are sponsors of, of of terrorism, why are we sending them foreign aid, not one more dime? Which I don't know that anyone has really made that case so forcefully. Well, he's made that case in Congress. He's forced votes and cutting off aid to Egypt where he lost overwhelmingly. Yet when that issue is polled with the American people, the American people agree with them. In his speech, he talked about borrowing from China and giving it to Pakistan mm -hmm. and building bridges abroad when we need to be building bridges at home. I think his overall theme is, why are we giving foreign aid to countries that hate us? Right. Why are we giving money to these countries? And a huge point, I think something that's very important that pushes back against all of these neoconservative haters of Rand Paul is that he identified the threat to liberty throughout the world, and it is radical Islam. I think that's very important that he said that during that speech.